I can see why it's a favorite for many. I mean, who can resist this? Want to know how much we love our fried chicken? Just look around you. Since 2017, over 18 new eateries specializing in fried chicken have popped up across the island, prompting long queues among fans. And according to online food delivery platforms GrabFood and Food Panda, fried chicken is our top food choice when we order in. With Food Panda recording a whopping 70% increase in fried chicken orders, between 2019 and 2020. In this episode of Talking Point, I'm going to sink my teeth literally into all so juicy, fresh fried chicken. Peeling the layers of this meat to uncover what it is about this decadent dish that makes us crave for it. And what is it really doing to our health? There isn't a food historian specializing in fried chicken, but I do know a food writer with a soft Hello, spot for this man. crunchy, hey, juicy in. goodness. Let's go for our chicken joyride. Anything for <laughs> fried chicken. When she said she was going to track the rise in popularity of fried chicken, I did expect to be taken on a tour around Singapore. What would you say was the first notable trend of fried chicken in Singapore? I think that would have to be the opening of KFC. They had their first outlet in Somerset. Okay. I'm too young to remember. Oh yeah, <laughs> of course, me too. <laughs> but I do remember the drive through uh -huh. um, at Kalang, which is right up ahead. Let's go take a peek. It was the second drive through around. The first one was somewhere in Jurong, if I'm not wrong. It was such a thrill as a kid to be able to go to a restaurant and stay in your car and then food gets brought to you. <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed any notable trends over the years? 2007-ish, we had ayam panyet, which is okay. uh, Indonesian fried chicken. We also had the Korean fried chicken, the K-pop thing going, maybe 2010-ish, <laughs> where, you know, it sort of exploded. Within like a year, there was Korean fried chicken everywhere. It's come to a point where now you can go to a fine restaurant where a plate of chicken and waffles is $45. Yep. By international standards, I think we have very adventurous palates. So if you want to test bed a, a trend, bring it here, right? Mm. We have quite a nice variety of fried chicken here in Singapore now. So what would you say is the latest fried chicken trend today? I think it's more effective if I show you. This looks like fried chicken. Smells like it. And I guess dip it in some ice cream and... Mmm, mm, yum. Okay, now try the sauce. The special thing here is that this caramel is made with chicken stock. I have to admit, when you said fried chicken ice cream, I was like, hmm, doesn't sound a bit weird. That's I want to taste like, but this tastes really good. There's very little not to like. Mm. Fried chicken has gotten more novel these days, where you have chicken coated in like durian sauce, for instance. Yeah. I've seen a pile of fried chicken with like whipped cream on top of it. We live in an Instagram world, right? So something like this, one of the things that will push you to try it is Instagram, right? Because you want to take a photo, you want to show, look, I had this today. We all know that fried chicken itself is already unhealthy. But with so many of us eating it, I want to know just how bad they are. So I'm putting fried chicken under the microscope. Which fried chicken will I be sending for testing? One type dominates the market. The ones from chain stores. There are those from American chains. Then there's Korean fried chicken, defined by their sweet, spicy sauce coating. Finally, Taiwanese fried chicken chains, which specialize in extra, extra large chicken cutlets. I pick fried chicken from 15 chain stores across Singapore, covering the spectrum, American, Korean and Taiwanese. Armed with my chicken, 
I've roped in food scientists and a food technologist. We'll be measuring MSG and sodium levels, the most common flavour enhancers for fried chicken. The type of chicken, will it make a difference? A lot of and it, finally, the most important question. Just how fattening is it? You can see, oh, the oil is coming out onto the paper. <laughs> As the scientists work on my samples, I'm starting on an experiment of my own. If you haven't guessed it by now, I'm putting my body and my health on the line once again, all in the name of science. I drank bubble tea for 30 days, started intermittent fasting in December of 2020, and this time, it's an experiment with one of my favourite foods. Fried chicken. For this juicy challenge, I'll be eating fried chicken from major chains every day for two weeks. That should be enough to find out what it will do to my body. To be safe, I'm carrying out this experiment under the watchful eye of family physician Dr. Philip Cole. First, he's requested to do some medical tests on me to check if I'm in a good enough shape. Well, see, your blood pressure is good. Your glucose is good, so that means you don't have diabetes. Okay. However, looking at your cholesterol results, they are slightly high. Mm. However, since it's just a two-week experiment, looking at your health in totality, okay you are still within the low range of cardiovascular risk. And therefore, you have the green light to okay. carry on this experiment for two weeks. As I start on my fried chicken diet... Mmm! That tastes so good. Oh boy, I have missed this. I'm digging further into our love for fried chicken. And I'll soon discover that it's not entirely by choice. Even if you're not interested in eating fried chicken, you're being targeted. Mm. I just started on my fried chicken diet, where I'll have a fried chicken meal every day for two weeks. At the end of this experiment, I'll know exactly what my love for fried chicken is doing to my health. Just come out and pick up some dinner for the family because it's a chicken feast tonight. Woohoo! Yeah. Despite a move towards healthier lifestyles and diets in Singapore, fried chicken remains a favourite staple. You should do this more, then we get more fried chicken. Mm. Oh. That makes me wonder why we are fans of this notoriously unhealthy dish. I'm meeting chef Samir Chablani. His affinity with fried chicken first formed during his stint as a cashier and kitchen staff at KFC when he was just 14 years old. Since then, he's been cooking and tasting fried chicken in search of the best one ever. So I'm out filming today. Still, somehow, when I see fried chicken laid out in front of me, I'm drawn to it and I think, hmm, that's gonna taste yummy. That's the crazy thing about it. I mean, no matter how many days you eat fried chicken, you just wanna eat more of it. I'm getting him to explain what it is about chain store fried chicken that makes it so irresistible. Well, the great thing about it is the pricing, the accessibility. The chain restaurants kind of let you choose the kind of parts you want, they let you choose what kind of flavours you want, the sauces, the drink, the mashed potatoes, the, the coleslaw, all of it just comes together and it can be just about $7. Whenever I'm making the fried chicken at home, it never looks like this. It just looks a lot more sad, you know? Why is that so? These chains use all your senses yeah. to get you excited about that food, you know? Even before you walk in, you can smell the chicken. Okay. And you're looking at everybody else eating, you can yeah. sort of hear that little crunch going on and everybody looks really, really happy and satisfied while they're eating their chicken. So there's the sight, there's the sound, there's the smell. Before you even get to the taste, your yeah. mind has been made yeah. up. 
Fried chicken chains invade all our senses to evoke that craving for their product. But there is one more thing that gets fans excited. New and limited edition flavour launches. How much does this contribute to our enduring love for this unhealthy dish? I'm meeting Juliana Lim. Innovation is an ongoing process for us at KFC. Her job is to consistently be on the lookout for what's trending on our plates and to release a new flavour successfully once every six to eight weeks. So take for example the latest Tango Spice product mm. that we launched. Singaporeans, we know that they love spicy food. Right. And we have done mala chicken, Sichuan, red hot. So what is next? So when we look through the, the trends, we realise that oh, South American flavours are trending. Right. And we want to take that to our chicken to bring it to Singaporeans. And that's how we got the new KFC Tango Spice Chimichurri Chicken on the menu. Hello! So this is Vicky. Yeah, she is the lady who is working with the ingredients we need for every single flavour. Before the new flavour hits the stores, there are several rounds of taste tests. Okay, so this is our sensory room. Okay. Where we put our products to a taste test. Ah. Take a seat. Alright, so I'm here in a room in a confined space. Whoa, whoa! Okay. But <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> this is pretty strange. Ooh. Ooh, look at that. So they've just brought in a plate of fried chicken. Mmm. Mmm. Ooh. Good. <laughs> a little bit spicy. Mm. Lots of flavour, lots of crunch. Pretty good. So how's the experience? Yes. Um, interesting. <laughs> I, I, when, the, when the room went red, that surprised me. So the whole purpose of the light is to take your attention away from the appearance. I so that see. you just taste the flavour as it is. So when you guys are coming up with all these new flavours, what are some of the considerations you think about? For fried chicken, Singaporeans love it because of the crunch. So we do have products during development stage, we will find that the crunch is not there. So we will have to change the breader. That means we could add things like nacho chips onto it so that it becomes crunchier. Oh. Or we could change the different type of flour that we use. Also, what we do is we look at the occasion. Mm. So for example, during Chinese New Year, you want to come out with a flavour that is perhaps a little bit more auspicious looking. Mm. So hence, go spice. And when it comes to perhaps National Day, that's where we will have um, products like zero chicken, which is a very much of a local zeta flavour coming out right. for the Singaporeans. Limited edition flavours, the all-important crunch, and timing new product releases to special occasions. The triumvirate of factors that keep us coming back for more finger-licking good chicken. Now, it could be because of the research I've been doing for this story, but I realised that I've been receiving a lot more fried chicken ads on Facebook, on Instagram, basically whenever I search online. All this plays a huge part in making us want more and more fried chicken. That's according to F&B marketing specialist Jenny Tan and Chiara Ang, author and host at a food site eBook. I've got a bunch of cuts here. Okay. So let's do a simple experiment. Okay. See what's the commonality between all of these brands? Mm -hmm. I think color red is very pronounced, and also the word chicken. When it comes to like colour psychology of branding, when you see the colour, red, you will immediately associate it with like passion. In addition, you have other colours like um, yellow for example, right, in this example of like ginger chicken, yellow usually brings to mind hunger. So if you put the two colours oh. together, what do you get? Red and yellow. Passionately hungry? Yeah. So that's oh, one okay. of the first, yeah, first, first ways okay, in which okay. they, they, they attract. And have you seen a shift in the way brands are marketing their fried chicken? There's this thing called audio marketing, which I feel is up and coming. Fried chicken brands, they engage mukbangers to eat an entire platter of fried chicken. Wow. 
we recently did a um, Korean fried chicken vlog. So yep. when we're eating a chicken, right, we're just going closer to the mic and then we'll crunch. So after an entire like mukbang video or a vlog, you'll get hungry because you hear it, you see it, and you just really want to smell and taste it. So have you noticed any like fried chicken ads that's been appearing on your Facebook feed or Instagram feed? Yeah, yeah. I realise they're popping up more often. Of course, you're being targeted mm -hmm. by the brands uh, on social media and it can go down to the detail in this day right. and age, even up to um, the weather as well, you know. The weather? Some actually allows you to run ads even according to the weather. Ah. Mm. So for example, it's a cold, rainy okay. weather, then you have like mala, chicken. Right. So this means that even if you're not interested in eating fried chicken, mm. but if you fall within that profile, mm -hmm. right, that the brand is targeting, then you would constantly see the ads popping out. And usually after a certain period of time, you would be tempted to say, okay, you know, maybe right. we'll just try this fried chicken one time. But as the days go by with my new diet, I'm mm. starting to feel the ill effects. Oh, I'm feeling a little bit sluggish. I, I'm not sure if it's got to do with the fact that last night I had this uh, huge fried chicken feast. Uh, I really have no craving for it anymore these days. The crunchy battered skin and flavour for meat are what first got me hooked on fried chicken. But now they have become the very thing that makes me feel, well, sick. Oh, it's so oily and greasy and I feel like uh, now I'm tired. Ah, doctor. Hello. Hey, hi, Steve. I'll soon find out what exactly eating all this greasy food is doing to my body. I picked the most popular fried chicken item from the top American style, Korean, and Taiwanese fried chicken brands and sent them to be tested for their sodium, MSG and fat levels. For each brand, we're testing one serving of their most popular fried chicken. It's been three weeks. Finally, the results are out. First up, MSG. Coming in third for MSG levels per serving is... American-style fried chicken. Followed by Korean, and in top place with the most MSG is Taiwanese fried chicken. As for the overall sodium levels, third place goes to American style fried chicken. Coming in a close second is Korean fried chicken. And the saltiest chicken, Taiwanese fried chicken. With close to 800 milligrams of sodium per serving. That's 40% of our daily recommended sodium intake it is quite high because in terms of recommendations from the Health Promotion Board, we should not consume more than 2,000 milligrams of sodium per day. So this is just for the chicken alone. I mean, if I take the Western style, that's very typical, about 550 plus I add on my French fries, mashed potatoes, I have a soft drink. Is it possible that I could hit 1,000 milligrams? Yes, it's quite possible. We can have a lot more sodium coming from those side dishes. And on top of that, normally we don't eat our ch chicken straight off. We yep. normally dip it into something, oh, yeah. some kind of sauces. That's right. And these sauces may have uh, some sodium in it as well. Right, so all that really adds up. It, it sounds a bit scary already. Finally, fat levels. Coming in at third place is American-style fried chicken, with an average of 29 grams of fat per serving. That translates to about 260 kilocalories. Second place goes to Taiwanese fried chicken. With an average of 31 grams of fat or 278 kilocalories per serving. And the fattiest chicken, Korean fried chicken. Which comes in at a whopping 33.7 grams of fat or over 300 kilocalories per serving. So for someone, typically like a female mm. like me, um, the amount of calories I need is about 1,800 kilocalories. Mm, okay. Okay, so if I consume this chicken, you can see here the amount of energy contributed by the fat alone. Uh, the fat uh, is almost 400. Yeah. Okay, so there are quite a few here that are like that. So this is like 
20 something percent of the kilocalories that comes from fat. Ooh, okay, that, that sounds like a lot of fat. And I imagine in a day, we shouldn't have more than a certain portion, right? Correct, correct. So if we consume 1,800 kilocalories, yeah. about 30% of that kilocalories should come from fat. Ah, and yet one portion of chicken is already 22%. So once you add on your fries, your all the other side dishes, I mean, yes. over the 30%, right? You can easily go over the 30%. Okay, the saltiest fried chicken is the Taiwanese XXL cutlet variety. The fattiest, Korean fried chicken, which leaves American-style fried chicken as the, well, I suppose, lesser evil. Well, here I am with my very last fried chicken meal for the experiment. And you know what? I'm so happy this day has come because I have had it up to here with eating fried chicken. I'm back at Dr. Cole's clinic for another health screening. Having eaten fried chicken for 14 straight days, I'm anxious to find out how it has affected my health. For your weight, you actually lost 1 kg. I think it's because I'm still intermittent fasting. That could be it, right? So right. the weight loss could be attributed more to that than to your fried chicken. The previous time we took, your blood pressure was good. Okay. Right. So there's no change in that. The bad news is that your bad cholesterol went up. It's gone up by about another, let me yeah. see, five, you know, to, six five to six percent. Yeah, yeah that's right. You know, and that's just for two weeks of fried chicken. Yeah. I think I can attribute it to that because there's a lot of oil in fried chicken, right? Right. That's so right. this bad cholesterol being so high can be a health concern. What are the health concerns you're referring to? So the problem with bad cholesterol is that it can clog up your arteries. Mm -hmm. And that's when you get a heart attack. And if you get clogged up one of the brain arteries, you can also get a stroke. So in other words, if I were to carry on with a diet like that, having fried chicken almost every day yeah. for over six months, for example, yeah. to a year, yeah. that could just phew, skyrocket. You will get a heart attack at some point in time, prematurely, because the cholesterol will block the arteries. So what would you say is too much fried chicken? You shouldn't be doing what you did, eat fried chicken every day. Okay. Because that is definitely too much. If you really like to eat fried chicken, yeah then it is important to also have fruits and vegetables. And you need to have exercise as well to balance the diet. My lab test has shown that American-style fried chicken has lower sodium and fat levels compared to Korean and Taiwanese fried chicken. Well, that said, too much of any type could easily exceed our daily recommended sodium intake and calorie count posing a risk to our health. As much as it worries me, it's going to be tough trying to give up on this crunchy goodness, let alone try to limit my intake. So I'm determined to search for a healthier option. Looks all right. Without compromising on the flavour, crunch and price point. I'm going to invite you to tuck in and eat. But is that too good to be true?